Hey everyone, welcome back to another video from A Man Talks FPL SC. Game week 7 was nothing to write home about. I have pressed the wildcard button, it was about time the team needed it. So we are going to get into the first draft that I've come up with on my wildcard for game week 8. So as always if you enjoy it, really appreciate a thumbs up as it really helps me out. And please consider subscribing as well if you do enjoy the content. But enough of that stuff, let's get into the game week 8 wildcard draft. So we'll start off with a quick wrap up of how game week 7 went. In one word, bad. It was not a good game week for, and I think most people probably were in the same position as well we scored 43 total points minus four because we did take a four point hit for 39 points Asper Laqueta and Rudiger were the two players we brought in for Luke Shaw and for Trent Alexander-Arnold the hit did pay off because Asper Laqueta did do pretty well you know 10 points he got two assists so that was good to see although didn't get the clean sheet as you know Southampton got that penalty so Rudiger only got the two pointer there Sufal pretty disappointing again he himself did not actually have a fantastic game trust me he's already gone from the wildcard draft Sanchez at least we got the clean sheet and that nil nil so happy enough with those points there Mo Salah can just not put a foot wrong at the moment if you haven't seen the highlights of the Liverpool Man City game I strongly encourage it it was a fantastic watch and Mo Salah in the second half his assist for Mane and his goal in particular were just outstanding so a 13 pointer there from Salah we just can't doubt him even against Man City he just continues to deliver the points uh, elsewhere it was very very disappointing otherwise you know Salah only got the one pointer against Leeds because he got a yellow card no attacking returns there Rafinha blank so only the three points similar with Ben Rama only the two the forward line again was actually the most disappointing in my opinion Antonio fair enough he had some decent opportunities but only the two points Chris Wood that was really discouraging you know I brought him in specifically for that game against Norwich and he gets a one pointer with a yellow card and to be honest didn't look very threatening at all it was a very dull nil nil affair and Ronaldo that was probably the biggest kick in the gut for the whole game week you know your captain coming off the bench only playing around half an hour that was really discouraging to see it's unfortunate but we just have to live with it so yeah on the bench again not much to speak of there three points from Smith Rowe and so that was a total points of 39 as I said we are now 460 total points we had a game week rank of 2.7 mil and another red arrow to 250k I was kind of expecting you know a bit of a middling week where I didn't either get up in rankings or I went down a little bit the rankings are still very tight in terms of the points spread between a lot of players so I think a 250k rank before we wildcard obviously would have been nice to get a green arrow going into the international break but that's okay we'll live with that so 39 points for the game week but let's get into the wildcard so a few general tips I will give on the wildcard if you are looking at playing it over the international break. The first one is you are certain of playing the wildcard in game week 8. In my opinion there's no point waiting in terms of actually activating it. Um, you're better off playing it earlier in the international break if you can. That gives you two weeks to be able to tinker with your team and also to bring in players you know you can increase your team value by bringing in players who are going up in price. Um, FPLstatistics.co.uk I'll put a link for that in the description below is a great website at tracking potential player price increases and then you know you can use that opportunity to when they've actually risen in price by 0.2 because you have to have a 0.2 price rise increase to actually gain the 0.1 profit you know if that happens in the international break you can then sell them and then you can potentially make a 0.1 million dollar profit so that you know activating the wildcard early does help you enable some extra team value if you can do it correctly but as part of this tinkering you have to be careful as well if you have players in your team who have already gone up in value Antonio is a great example of that if you you know tinker with your team and trade them out and then decide you want to bring them back in while on your wildcard you may have to pay extra for them so Antonio is 7.5 mil was his starting price he's now gone up to 8.0 mil and so that means that you can actually sell him for 7.7 because as before, as we mentioned, for every 0.2 that the player goes up in price, you gain 0.1 of that. So at the moment, you can sell him for 7.7. .7. But if you sell him on your wild card, but then you decide you want to bring him back on your wild card, you have to buy him back at 8 million. So that's already an extra 0.3 mil that you'd have to pay for him. So with players like that, that you've got some value built up in, I wouldn't take them out of your team unless you're definitely certain that you don't want them moving forward on your wild card. One thing when you do have your wildcard draft in place as well is plan the future transfers for it for the next six to eight weeks because we're not going to get a chance to wildcard for a very long time. We don't get another one up until January. And so you really want to be looking really long term with your wildcard draft, ensuring that it can be a good team um, for the foreseeable future. So I think definitely planning your transfers six to eight weeks uh, from your wildcard team is going to be really, really beneficial. And finally, consider flexibility as well with you know different price points because it's a good opportunity to optimally set up your team so that it can be very flexible. You know, if, you know, if there's injuries somewhere that can come up in your team, you've got the different price points to be able to manage that better. Also, this could potentially mean keeping some money in the bank as well. So those are just some general tips I would have on the wild card, but let's get into what you guys are actually here for. That's looking at the team. So starting off at the back, I think Ramsdale at 4.5 million is probably one of the best 
uh, goalkeepers to go for on a wild card because Arsenal have got some pretty good fixtures coming up and he's proven in my opinion to probably be the number one choice goalkeeper at Arsenal and he's shown himself to be a pretty good shot stopper and he's got three clean sheets already in the games that he's played and I think Arsenal's backline looking a lot more confident with the likes of Tomiyasu, um, Ben White, Gabriel and Tierney I think that's definitely our first choice backline and so I think our defense overall is looking a little bit more solid so I think Ramsdale is a great option at goalkeeper and you'll see him in a lot of wildcard drafts for sure. Moving on to the defenders we've got four defenders because I think there's some incredible value from the Manchester City and the Chelsea defenders so we've stuck with Rudiger and Aspilicueta who I think are the two safest Chelsea defenders to go for. Rudiger and Aspilicueta are basically nailed on. Aspilicueta has got that benefit of A, he's the captain, so you'd expect him to be in the team most of the time. He can play right centre back, but he can also play at right wing back, as we saw um, against Southampton, and that definitely lets him get some attacking returns. And I think you can see the run of fixtures there Brentford, Norwich, Newcastle, Burnley, and even beyond that, they've got a really good run of games. So I think they're just going to be a very, very integral piece of the wild card. Similar can be said about the Manchester City defenders in Cancelo and Diaz. I think these two are the standout options to go for. Diaz is nailed on in that Man City defense, and Cancelo, he's looking pretty nailed on as well. He's played every minute of every Premier League game so far, and he's definitely got that good attacking threat. He's ranked in the top two or three uh, defenders in terms of attacking threat. For FPL. And again, pretty good run of games coming up for Man City, Burnley, Brighton, Crystal Palace and United and they are by far and away the best defence in the Premier League so I think going with one or even two Man City defenders on your wildcard is going to be a good move with their nice run of fixtures coming up. In the midfield, we're stuck with Salah. I mean, there's no reason to drop Salah in the form that he's in. He's delivering FPL points for fun. He's got 70 FPL points in seven games. That's just an incredible return so far. So he completely justifies his price tag. I think similar can be said about Rafinha at 6.5 million. He's probably the best kind of budget midfielder option to go for. And a nice run of games in Southampton, Wolves, Norwich, and Leicester to come up. He's definitely a lock in the wildcard draft as well. There potentially could be some issue around him, you know, playing in Brazil over the international break and whether he'll be back for game week eight. From the reports that I've read, he should hopefully be okay. But the benefit of the wild card is that you can set up the teams to have a strong first sub just in case he can't make it in game week eight. I think moving forward, he's still going to be someone you want to have on your draft. So I think if you can just set it up to have a good first sub who can come on in replacement of Rafinha, he's still worthy enough of selection in the wild card team. Now, Smith Rowe is still here at 5.3 million. I think. There's a lot of good budget midfielders to go for. You know, you've got the likes of Smith Rowe, Mbuemo, uh, the three Everton boys in Gray, Takure, Townsend, you know, Conor Gallagher from Crystal Palace. I think there's a multitude of these really, really good cheap midfielders. So I think a crucial part of the wildcard is going to be selecting the right one. I've stuck with Smith Rowe at the moment. Some good games coming up in Crystal Palace, Villa, and Watford. If you actually look at Arsenal fixtures beyond that, a lot of their good fixtures are actually played at home. And I think the home benefit is really going to be helpful. And so I like Smith Rowe getting in the right positions in my opinion he has some of these late runs into the box and we saw he had a similar chance in the last game week against Brighton so I think he's getting to the right positions he just hasn't quite delivered on the FPL points yet he's had one big haul obviously against Tottenham but I think there could be more to come from Smith Rowe and Grealish it's a bit of a boring pick for Man City but I think with those next three games of Burnley, Brighton and Crystal Palace Man City notoriously always smash Burnley like 3, 4, 5 nil when they play at the Etihad and I really want to get a Man City attacker to it like kind of attack these next three fixtures and I think Grealish has proven to be nailed on. You could make an argument to go for like a Phil Foden or a Jesus at the moment. I've gone with Grealish just for the security that I think he's a bit more nailed on. I would argue that Foden is probably a little bit more attacking and he had an excellent display against Liverpool just over the weekend as well. But I really like that price point as well of Grealish of 8 million. I think it enables you to get up to like a Huming Son down the line a little bit easier than if say you had a bunch of cheap midfielders to go alongside Salah. And so I really like that price point. You know, it keeps you um, flexible to go for the likes of a Jota if, if Jota stays nailed on for, uh, for the Liverpool attack. And so I really like that price point. So Grealish or someone around that price point for Man City, I think would definitely feature on my wildcard draft. And in the forward line, Lukaku, again, is probably going to be someone who's an absolute lock on the wildcard with those nice runner games coming up for Chelsea. He's definitely going to be a big captaincy consideration in game week nine, home to Norwich when, you know, the likes of Salah have got Manchester United. Again, even in game week 11, when he plays Burnley at home, he could be a good captain consideration. So I think that captaincy factor, the nice run of fixtures, he has blanked in the past few games, but he had some tough games against the likes of Liverpool, Spurs, and Manchester City. And Southampton, I think he was really unlucky to not get any returns. You know, he hit that shot against the post. I have no idea how he missed that. His goal that he did actually score was ruled offside. So he definitely had the chances. So I think the, the points will come for Lukaku. 
and Antonio has shown such good form so far to begin the season, I think it's hard to make a case to drop him, although the run of games for West Ham is not the best. So I think there definitely still is an argument that you could go without Antonio on your wildcard draft. And on the bench there, we've got the likes of Foster. I think a 4 million playing goalkeeper is definitely going to be the way I'm going to go. I like to keep my goalkeepers pretty cheap, so I go with the 4 mil and the 4.5. Ivan Tony, he's on the bench in this game week, but Brentford have shown themselves to be an excellent attacking team, and Tony has looked absolutely class, to be honest, in his most recent fixtures. And I think on penalties, with a good run of games coming up, from game week 10 especially, I think they've got a run of like Burnley, uh, Norwich, Leeds, and the likes of that. So definitely you could see a lot of attacking returns for someone like Ivan Tony. So he's definitely, I think, going to at least feature in the wildcard draft or be someone that I would look to bring in in the next few weeks. Livermento, I think, is that kind of perfect uh, budget defender enabler as your fifth defender that can cover any potential rotation from a Cancelo or like an Aspilicueta. And Brownhill, he's just a cheap fifth midfielder who would never really feature on the team. He'd be third on the bench, but he does play every week and can offer, you know, two points as security if any of the other attackers uh, don't make the team. So I would say with this wildcard draft, there are definitely a few players who are going to be absolute locks. And I think realistically, barring any potential injuries over the international break, I'm not going to be leaving my team. Rudiger, Cancelo, Rafinha, Salah, Lukaku, Ben Foster and Livermento, I think are all players who I think are 100% going to be in my wildcard draft. All the others remain some question marks because I think there's definitely good options you know, elsewhere aside from these players. Like Ramsell, you could go for like a Raya from Brentford as your goalkeeper instead. You know, Aspilicueta and Diaz, obviously there's no Trent Alexander-Arnold in this draft. This is assuming that he's not fit for game week eight. If he was available for game week eight, I think 100% Trent would be coming in for either Aspilicueta or Diaz. And as you can see there, we've got 1.5 mil in the bank, so we would be able to afford Trent for either of these two. So we have got that flexibility, I think, as well to bring in Trent. Hence the question mark over Aspilicueta and Diaz. I would just have to decide, I want to go for double City defense or would I want to go for double Chelsea defense? Part of me is actually leaning towards double City defense because they, as a defensive team, are by far and away the best. I would argue that Chelsea's fixtures are better. Um, and I think it also depends on Aspilicueta if the likes of, say, a Rhys James is fit. Because if Reese James is fit, I would expect Aspilicueta to be, be playing a little bit more and it's the right centre back as opposed to right wing back. And that definitely does limit his attacking potential. And in that case, if that were to happen, I would probably move on Aspilicueta and keep Diaz. But if Aspilicueta was staying at right wing back, then it might be Diaz who actually goes for Trent Alexander Arnold. Smith Rowe, as I mentioned, there was a bunch of cheap midfielders to go for. So I think that's definitely a position that I'm still not 100% certain on. Same with the Grealish, if I say I want to go for maybe a Jota or like a Phil Foden instead. Antonio, obviously you've got a lot of good mid-priced forwards like Jimenez, uh, Bamford, who's probably got better fixtures than Antonio. So he's definitely someone who's abs not an absolute lock on the wild card, but he has got a very good chance of making it. The Tony, you know, it could potentially have an alternative of like an Adam Armstrong from Southampton, who in the short term definitely has got better fixtures. But I think I prefer Tony, just overall Brentford, I think are a much more attacking team than Southampton. And so I've got a little bit more confidence in the likes of a Tony compared to an Adam Armstrong. Brownhill, the only reason I've got a question mark is potentially if there is spare change, I could go for like another 4.5 million midfielder, although that's not really going to be, you know, a make or break on my wildcard team. All right, guys, so that is my first wildcard draft. Let me know in the comments below what you think of it, any potential changes I could make, and also your thoughts if you're also on a wildcard and you've got any questions for me. There are definitely still going to be videos coming out over the international break, so definitely stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, and I'll see you all in the next video.